welcome to the Loosen Up Your Painting podcast, the podcast for creatives looking to get inspiration, tips and advice on anything to do with art and creativity. If you enjoy creating something, then this is the podcast for you. I'm your host, Malcolm Dewey, a full-time artist at MalcolmDeweyFineArt.com. And let's begin the show. It's good to be back talking to you again about painting and the art life. And in this podcast, I want to have a short chat about some important rules that I've found has been very helpful to me and helps me to be more productive as a full-time artist. But it doesn't necessarily have to be for a professional. Whether you paint occasionally or once a month or get to it whenever you can, here's some good tips and three especially what I call three important rules for a productive artist. No matter what level you're working at, beginner or a seasoned professional. So there are many ways for a creative person to approach life as an artist. As I said, there's the full-time professional, then you get the weekend painter, you can be an art academic or a historian and focus on art theory, or become an art teacher. Some of these overlap and you can apply combinations of these options. All of these approaches and more are valid. It does depend on what you want from your life as an artist. If you know what you want, then you'll figure out your direction and you'll find your way. So let's have a look at your choice. Let's say that you have chosen to be a painter. Let's focus on painting. So first, you start painting part-time and then decide to move into it full-time. Perhaps you're doing a transition from a side hustle into a full-time art career. Either way, you need to improve your painting skills. Also, your studio management, and there's much more that goes with that as well. You'll need to study sales and marketing and even the psychology of selling if you want to go into a full-time professional artist. There's all sorts of other things as well, maybe more technical stuff that you may delegate to someone else or contract out, or if you enjoy it, You'll learn about all those things yourself from website design to social media posts and all of that sort of thing. So I'll leave all of those issues to you to pursue in your own time. But for now, let's look at three fundamentals of living a productive and rewarding life as an artist. There are obviously a lot more, but I feel that these three are important and they cover a lot of territory. So the three fundamentals. Number one is respect. Have respect for other artists and for yourself. This guides your conduct, your thoughts, your deeds, how you approach your own practice and how you deal with the world in general. So respect other artists whether or not they are better painters than you. Respect will keep you humble and sincere. Something that is quite rare these days but is really very appreciated when you deal with somebody who has these qualities. Try and be that person and you will see a lot of doors open up for you and you will make some genuine connections and relationships in your career. Respect will keep you professional and it will also deal with that other nasty issue that we sometimes have to grapple with because we're just human. And that is jealousy. You don't want to be jealous of other artists. Respect will help you to remember that each artist must walk their own path. Sometimes they are happy, other times they are struggling. You cannot know their lives, so always be mindful of their feelings. Try not to add negative energy to your emotions either. Comparing yourself in a judgmental way cannot be good for your art practice. Instead, aim for a sense or an attitude of gratitude. Be grateful that you are able to share the art life with other kindred spirits. Okay, rule number two is work with joy. A creative life is a joyful one. There is nothing quite like an artist's life. Seeing and experiencing life as an artist means having a heightened awareness. You know what is wasteful and unproductive. You also know what is important 
and you have insight into the meaning of life. It doesn't mean you've perfected these things, but you certainly are aware. You find yourself in sync with creativity and life in general. And when you are out of sync, you recognize the effects. You feel self-doubt, anger, frustration, and other negative emotions. Fortunately, you can identify these states of mind because you are self-aware and you can work your way out of them. Can you imagine spending your precious life or your time binge-watching TV? How about spending hours shopping at the mall? If you instinctively recoil at these activities, pretty much like I do, you are self-aware. Sadly, most people happily give up their time for no real return and will do these activities without giving them a second thought. You know that working on your art inspires more work, ideas, and also creativity. Also, that work increases productivity. The result is artwork for your store, ideas for teaching classes, ideas for recording material for videos, and marketing, and much more. The saying goes that if you love what you do, you never have to work a day in your life. I agree with this entirely. It may sound glib and too simple. Some days are more complex than others. Some periods in this career are filled with anxiety as well. This could be lack of money, clients or good reviews, and many other things that make certain times difficult to bear. Working through these periods is the difference between success and failure. If you paint miles of canvas and use gallons of paint over a period of time, eventually your career becomes self-sustaining. This is the way of things. Keep working, learning, and be open to growth. An artist must remain a child that needs to keep learning to improve. I'm at an age when most people are considering cashing out their retirement and putting up their feet. I find this a really depressing thought. I'm learning so much all the time, and it makes me excited to start each day. So rule number three I have as steel like an artist. It's sometimes said that there is nothing new under the sun. Everything has been done before. Therefore, artists must repeat everything. Then there's the saying that you must steal like an artist. This doesn't mean theft or plagiarism or copying. Instead, artists must absorb what others have done make it their own, and produce their own unique take on the subject. For example, Picasso learned from Cezanne and then created Cubism. Da Vinci learned from Giotto, and many other artists influenced the next batch of master artists. So who has influenced you? For me, it's the Impressionists. They have been incredibly important. My paintings are not mistaken for any of the past master impressionists, yet my work is recognizable as impressionist. I'm influenced by these artists, I've used their ideas and methods to create my own work, but my work looks different. The point is that you need to actively learn from the masters in the field that inspires you, assimilate their work, then produce your own unique work. Your natural development will make your work look different. Don't worry about your style. This will develop on its own and in its own time. Be proud of your influences and learning. Acknowledge your mentors. You are following a noble path and you'll be influencing others too. So considering these three rules, I don't think there's any real great secret to them. They are self-evident and when you hear them, you can obviously agree that that is what you'd like. What matters is putting it all into practice. Make it your life's work, make it a living, and make it happen. So, what do you think? Does that sound reasonable? Are those three fundamentals important? Have you applied them or adapted them to your own art practice? Let me know, and uh, hopefully it gives you something to think about, and also a reminder that everything does work out if you work on it. And uh, we'll all end up hopefully spending many, many more productive years as artists. Now, if you're interested in learning more, 
of course, I'd like to encourage you to visit my art school. You can visit my website at malcolmdeweyfineart.com. Have a look at painting courses and you'll find many courses there from free to premium ones covering different mediums and topics. It would be great if you could join me and uh, have a look. If you've never worked in my art school before, have a look at the free course called uh, How to Add Power to Your Paintings. You'll find that quite an interesting uh, insight and introduction to my school. Well, that's it for now. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please give it a review if you can. That always helps. And uh, I look forward to talking to you again soon. Until then, cheers for now.